Dave here. How are you? I had a little bit of a gap there. Um, I was just quickly trying to find my phone so I could pop this on Instagram. I trust everyone's well and today is the solstice. Winter in the southern hemisphere, summer in the northern hemisphere. So for us down here, we are looking forward to uh, longer days, uh, longer, more, well, more, the time of a day is 24 hours, obviously, so it's not going to be 25 hours, but more sunlight, which is going to be great. Get everything happening with the skin, get a bit of color back into us eventually, and also my solar panels should be kicking on and enjoying themselves. I hope you've had a good week and uh, you're starting to get out and about. We had a little bit of an interesting week. Vicky decided that she needed to go out and get one of these. I tried to get up with him, I admit that. What are you doing? But we arranged it and I was there waiting. He never showed up. I swear to you, he never turned up. Can we get away tomorrow? Ben has a meeting with some suppliers. He should have come yesterday. What are you doing over there? So the little friends here. Come on. So there you go. If you notice I start ending up with scratches and bite marks all over my arms, you will understand where they've come from. Uh, she's cute. She's cute. I didn't want another dog. Vicky did. So, you know, <laughs> happy wife, happy life, as they say. And I know she'll grow on me and, uh, you know, and it'll be a sad day when we say goodbye to her like I had to with Barry. Anyway, there we go. Uh, today on the show, I'm going to get straight into it as quickly as I can. I'll read down through the sheet, and so we'll know what's going on. Um, okay, so continuing in the mobile machine cabinet. Today we're going to do edge tape and the drawers. So you can see behind me, I got a bit of a head start during the week. I've assembled the cabinet, you know, after I had to pull it apart. And I went with all the other things that I've done, trying to get it up to a stage where we concentrate on making one drawer. I did a video during the week on how to make a drawer. Well, we'll readdress that. Uh, and then I'll show you actually fitting it in here and doing the drawer fronts. And there's going to be an interesting part with the drawer fronts that you may not be aware of. So this is something that could help you a lot if you've been doing this kind of stuff. I should really move this over up there. And I will. There we go. This is just moving the Patreon cam sign up out of the way so it doesn't come in front of everything. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you very much for that. Now, uh, we'll get into it. As I say, TSO out of stock, parallel guides, but coming soon. That was the situation. And remember last week I said it'd be a couple of weeks. They've jumped in early. It was only around about five days after I said a couple of weeks and they're back in stock. The affiliate links in the description box down the bottom. The channel does get a consideration for it. No extra cost to you guys for purchasing there or if you go straight into TSO's site on your own, whatever you want to do. Um, okay, uh, Cole Hosey's box. Look, I'll show that picture right now. Cole has uh, joined in and he's done with his Gifkin's jig He's making his own mobile cabinet. So this is a beautiful box that he's doing with the full extension slides. I hope they're soft clothes as well, Cole. And uh, Cole may or may not be here with us at the moment. Let's have a look. I can't see. Oh, there he is. Hi, Dave. There you go, Cole. That's your little bit of uh, spot in the sunshine. He, liked, he likes the light <laughs> on him as well. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to address a question that I had during the week regarding the grip tape on my benches. That's the first thing. Now, if you want, you can use a dust extractor or you can just use a simple brush from a dustpan and broom. All you have to do, give it a quick rub like that and it's ready to go again. This is not a sticky adhesive tape. This is a grip tape. So it's a it grips really well. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm moving things all over the place here. The next thing I want to do is clean up this bit of melamine. So this is the drawer base and the front and the back. Can you see it's all going to be 
one part. Now to speed things up today, I'm, well, I'm going to rip this down to 510 wide. So the front, the base, and the back are all going to be the same width. So when I clamp them together, I'm not going to have the um, base uh, pushing away or, or the, fronts hold, the front holding the clamps away from the base, all that kind of stuff. You'll understand as I'm going along. But I did get a head start. I'm going to show you a little trick as well. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is this has got a lot of dirt on it. I might go up to Carl Camp for this part. All right, here we go. See if I can find Carl Cam. There it is. Transition. Now, you see there's some marks on this, this bit of melamine. All I do to clean melamine quickly is acetone. All right, it's... It really would be a good idea to wear gloves if you're going to do a fair bit of it. A little bit like this. All it is is nail polish remover. And it gets rid of the stuff really quickly. Now why am I cleaning it? Because I'm just like that. And a bit over there. That's looking a whole lot better already. Cool. Thought you might be interested in that. Now, the next thing to do is to cut this. You may see on the corner that I've put a little right angle mark. It's just that line like that because I know this and this are square. I already set them up to being square. So on my bench, because we're getting into smaller pieces, I don't like things sliding around when I'm cutting from the underside. So I hold it from underneath and I'm going to use the small dog. So I'm going to put one there and I'm going to put one over there. I'm going to put two dogs, one in the rip section on my bench and up here is the other rip section. So they're perfectly suited to what I want to do. So I just push that up against these two and then the rail is going to go across here for the cut. Now remember I'm going to cut this to 510 wide. A couple of ways I can do that is to actually get a tape and measure 510 and put a mark or I can set my track up to be 510. How do I do that? I'll show you. So there's my track and it's going to sit on there and as I say I could pull it up to 510 but maybe my splinter guard has been damaged and I'm not going to get 510 exact. So what I can do is I've already cut the front and the back to 510 mil long and it's important that I get the base exactly the same width as the length of this because it's going to go on it at the front then I'm going to clamp the sides on as you would have seen in the video. Now how do I set that up? Well, <laughs> I'm going to use this. This is a parallel guide and it's got a slide here, a cursor here that I can set up to 510 and a bumper here which goes to where which is 510 from the side of the saw. Now how do I set that up in the first place? I can set it up by cutting a piece of 300 millimeter length, pushing it up against the edge of the blade on the saw, and then adjusting the bumper, and then it's set, and it's calibrated, and all the guides are going to be the same. There's three different lengths. Now this is the right hand guide with the guide rail adapter on it. So I'm going to slide the guide rail adapter on to the track. This only works with Makita, Triton, and Festool tracks. It will not work with the DeWalt track and it will not work with the Craig track. There's a whole heap of different tracks that these won't work with. Lock that in there, that in there, and you can see now that the distance from there to the edge there is whatever it's going to be reading on the cursor after I calibrate this. Now I've already calibrated that so I'm not overly concerned. So what I'm going to do next is the one of the first tricks I'm going to show you today.
I'm going to get these. I'm going to put one there, one here, and one here. So these are my two sides, and I'm not using these at the moment to be side sides. I'm using these to do a demonstration. I'm getting my track saw. Now, on the track saw is this little guy at the front here. You pull that forward, and it can't turn it on, and then when you push it down, it locks the blade down in that position around about an inch down. So I'm going to set my track to there, put my saw on the track, and now I can slide this piece. This is the piece I want to reference from. So this is going to be my side. I better check that because that could be ugly if it's not. So this is going to be front. Yes, this is a front. I'm going to slide it under until it touches my blade. I'm going to check underneath there that it has touched the blade. Now, there's the left-hand side of the kerf and the right-hand side of the kerf. Quick note that the overhead camera keeps trying to focus. That's correct, Wally. It sure is. And it's doing a pretty good job of it. It's just when I put a high contrast image of unit in, in front of the camera, it tries to lock on that. So it's, it's locking on that at the moment. Now, I'm going to put it actually right under where that is. Oh, hold on. Let me bring it back to gone past, gone past, gone past, gone past. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it there under that and then I'm going to bring this back. Actually, how about I just take it up to there? That's going to be easier, isn't it? Yep. So I'm under there at the moment. Now I'm going to drop the swing stop down, pull it backwards and push it back and tighten it up. What do you think of that? That now is perfectly calibrated to the length of this. So I don't care where my, my uh, splinter guard disappears. All right, now I can take this off, push this back. And it comes back to being an ordinary track saw again, unlocked. There you go. That is absolutely perfect. So now I'm going to take these off here. Does that make sense to you guys, what I just did? I'll switch the cameras so we're seeing it straight at the front again. Does that make sense? So now I have this. The splinter guard is exactly the length. That, so where the saw is going to cut is perfectly here to that bumper. It'll make sense in a second. Move that down there. Now I've got one other thing I'm going to do. I can move this up out of the way. One other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this guy on. Because other people have been asking me, what's this? This is the rear track support. So I can put this in. This will work on this side. Or I take this out and put it in the other hole here. Put it on the front for when I'm doing cross cutting. So at the moment, this is basically for ripping. I'll slide that onto there. And to, to get the height that I want, I'm just going to put the melamine. I can move this out of the way for the moment. I'm going to slide the melamine up to the end. Move that out. Slide it up to the end. So that's my reference height. Like so. Tighten this up. I'll switch cameras so you can see it. Okay, so here's the support. All I did was slide it on the T grip, or sorry, the T bolt goes into the track on the front of my bench. I raise it up to the rebate. There's a little rebate there. I'll show it to you. Just here, there's a little rebate. The track will slide into that. This is going to guide the hose and stops the back dropping. The back of the track dropping. Tighten that up. Beautiful. Now it's set. 
for 16 millimeters. Down the end here, I've got these two guys. I'm going to slide that up to there until it's pushing against those. Bring it forward a little bit. Now I'm going to put the guide rail clips on the track, one at either end, these little guys. Again, there's links for those down there if you want to look. And then I'm going to slide the track along until it drops into the rebate here, like so. And I'm going to push it back until it hits the dogs. And where's the other dog, David? There it is, in the rip. Okay, slide it back to there. Drop this bumper now down and then pull, push the sheet back until it hits the bumper. There you go, making sure I'm against those two there. And that is perfectly referenced to this one. That is going to be the exact position. I did not use a tape measure. What do you think? All right, I'm going to go to the front camera again. It's dead easy using references. It's, uh, it's just so easy. So I've got to put these little clips on. And because we've got the uh, parallel guide on there, I can't twist the track to put them on. So I've just got to lift it up a little bit and hook it over. That one's on. That one's on. Drop it down. And then just make sure that everything is back into the same position. That's all down that way. That's there. I've got grip tape on the bench. It's holding the, the melamine still. It can't move around. There's grip tape under the track. It's not going anywhere. It's locked on to the dogs at either end not going anywhere. It's sitting on the rebate. Just push it down a touch. It's sitting in the rebate. Sneaking it a touch there. So when I get the, um, when I do the cut with the saw, the hose is going to be traveling up behind me. It's not going to catch on anything. How about we cut it? Now again, I'm going to use my method of cutting, which is Ian, yes, but the initial setup, buddy, is what you've got to think about. I do one setup right at the beginning, and next thing it's all referenced. Bang, bang, bang. This is just so for people that don't have a drop saw or a table saw, you can do it all this way. It really is easy. I'll get this. I'll set the saw to... Um, down to two millimeters and I'm going to do a reverse cut. I'll throw the protection on so no one gives me a hard time. <laughs> so I'll pull it along to there. You can see it's just traveling in there beautifully and I'm going to do my reverse cut here. And notice the track's not jumping up in the air or anything. Whilst it's in that position, I'm going to drop it down to 20 and go forwards. I didn't uh, tell the Bluetooth to start, did I? Let's do that. There we go, and match the Bluetooth battery up, wait for it to go blue, there we go, all fixed. <laughs> now you have mistakes. Alright, so now, that should be perfectly the same width, let's have a look. Okay, that one. Look at that. 
absolutely perfect. Absolutely. I'll go to the other camera. I'm not moving it. You can see it's perfect here. And straighten her up again. So you can, I'm going to hold it there. See it's good there. Go to the other camera. There. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yes, Matthew, turn the caps off. All right, so I've got to cut to the, um, the, the width. I'm now going to dock it to the length. It's got to be 517. I know that my uh, guide there is perfectly calibrated, the uh, parallel guide. Let's go back to this one. Spin her around. And get the track. Pop it in there and back to 517. 510, 5. Sorry, I'm wearing the wrong glasses. Put the other ones on. <laughs> okay, 510. 515. 517. Now there's no parallax error, error with these either because it's right on it. Go to Carl Cam so you can see it from above. Okay, so it's, that's where I've got to go to. I'll bring this thing forward. Drop that. That's it. Pushing against those two stops there and then back that way brings the track back. That's all good. And where's the other rail clip? It fell off when I picked the, picked the thing up. There's, obviously there's quicker ways of doing things, but you know, this works really well and it's bloody accurate. You won't get any more accurate than this. Done. That's all down, that's all down. 517 is what I've got to do. And hopefully this time the Bluetooth's going to work. Fire it up. Hooray! <laughs> And also, you see at this end, the track is not being pushed down. I can sit the track, the saw, anywhere along here, and it's going to hold well. Okay. Um, a full sheet is pretty hard to handle by yourself, definitely. So if you're using this system, this is fantastic for, for doing full sheets. You saw me on the previous shows cutting all this out with the parallel guides. Throw that back there. This one back to here. We'll do the reverse cut to start at two millimeters. Now you would have seen a bit of dust kicking out the front. That's because there's a trench there. There's nothing much that you can do about that. Drop it down to 20 and forward. All right, there it is. Switch to the front camera again. Perfect. Take this off. There you go. So now I'm going to take the bench off the, off the uh, assembly table because I'm going, oh no, first of all, I've got to do the, uh, I've got to do all the pocket holes. So let's get that done. I'll get the pocket holes done first. Yes. Okay. Drop this one down to here. We'll switch the cameras so you can see from the side. All right, move that one out of the way, that one there. 
this one here. Actually, pocket holes we're going to do on the top here, aren't we? <laughs> I'll still leave it there. That's fine. I was going to edge tape. I was in automatic. All right. Clamps are over here. Just to hold it down. Oops, won't be holding that one. It's a bit cool this morning. That's why I just dropped that. Got that one. And move that one. And that one. Beautiful. Dust extractor onto there. Um, where's my little adapter? Have I got that here still, David, or not? There it is. This is a little adapter that I use for it. Just slide that straight into there. And then this inside the dust port. And so I can turn it on. And off. And I'll put a drill, the Craig drill in, which is only a stepped drill. And I think I've got it set up at the right distance. Drop it in there, have a look. Yep, that's perfect. And we'll go to three on the speed. Okay, skip building that and got the steel cabinet for my paints. Um, Russell, I have to work in the garage and can, can't fit a full size sheet in the space available, so use the sight saw, but I love the concept of the track saw. All right, open this up, drop this in, and that's got it. Now I'm not going, I'm going to do um, pocket holes right the way around. I'll probably do four per side. I'm going to come in a couple of inches from each corner so that we don't get any crossover. Okay, it's, uh, it's a Pro Tool. It's Festool's, it's, it's a Festool, but it was um, a Pro Tool, which was their kind of commercial style. It's, it's the same. It's a, it's a Festool, you know. There's no real difference. It's just a marketing thing. Here we go. This is a lot quicker with a um, with the foreman, uh, but I'm trying to do all of this so that it's something that basic. It's it's affordable for anyone. Here we go. Turn this on again.
Nearly done. One to go. There we go. I'll switch the cameras again. So that's that's the base already set go. Let me have a quick read. Uh, Dave, see if you can get your hands on a Triton pocket hole jig even for a try. Don't have to pull driller out and move timber. Release paddle to the front. Don't have to pull the drill out to move the timber. I've used a Triton jig. I don't remember it being like that. It's not snowing up here yet. Dave, you need to support left hand side of the material. Yes, I do. I do. I do. All right, so I'm going to just shift that out of the way for the moment. Uh, actually, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll pocket hole the... Uh, I'm going to... I'm just thinking out loud here for a second. I'll pocket hole the two that need to be done here. So it's the front and the rear. So these... So it's the two short ones. Okay, they're the front and the rear. Now they're going to get, these ones are going up in the top drawer here. This is where it's going to go. You can see I've already done these, pocket hole there, and I've already finished that bottom unit totally. Soft close, it's beautiful. This, it's, this is so easy. All right, let's get this done. Um, if I put one about there and on the other side as well. Just doing a quick check. That, that, that is the front. Yep. Five set, the longer ones go past. All good. Here we go. There's my two there, and making sure we're on the same side. That'd be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Pocket holes on one side to the other. Yeah, if you watch the if you watch the midweek show, you've seen. Now that's. That's not going to worry me. See how I've gone high one side and high, low the other. It's not going to make that much difference. It's going to get locked into the base. The top, I could have come up a little bit higher on that one. So I was just talking too much and wasn't focusing. You notice I do stop now and then and just focus. Yep, support both sides of the jig is, is fine. I do intend to make a base for this, but I've got the foreman and it's so quick. <laughs> I'm getting a K5 very soon, Matt. Um, I'm going to just put this in the center and use, I'll switch the uh, cameras around. I'm going to use two of the guide holes. So I've got a guide hole here and a guide hole here. So that's why I'm going to do it and I'm going to favor the top. All right, you'll see what I mean when I do it. Okay, see that? Now when I flip it over, I'm going to work to this side of the jig. And I'm going to use like that and that. Like so. Don't you love the way that I pretend to make mistakes? Just so that you get a heads up. <laughs> um, is the main difference between the K4 and the K5 the side supports? No. The main difference between the K4 and the K5 is the clamp is on my side of the job, not around the back. So it does have supports, but the clamp is a ratcheting one. It pulls up 
and then lock. I don't have to do all sorts of adjustments. Like basically, this is just a, um, a toggle clamp. You know? Correct. Dylan, um, are there any more videos about the carcass? Didn't seem to get it put together in the last video. Well, you saw me go, go oh, basically all I'm doing is clamping it together and putting the, the screws in. So that's, that's all that was. You saw me put a draw slide on um, and, and then all I did was just clamp it together with the Bessies. If you want to, you can use the Craig Corner clamps. They work on the corners, but in the center, you can't get a corner clamp in the middle. So you get deflection. That's why I use the Bessies, because I can clamp all the way along and lock it. The other unit that I'm making for the lathe at the moment, I've actually created dados and rebates. Back panel screwed on from the back? No, the back panel is screwed on from inside and from the top. So you don't see anything on the back panel. I'll spin it around, you can see. Hold on, move that lead out of the way. So you see nothing from the back. See that? Screwed down through the top, up through the bottom, and in through the sides from the inside of the cabinet. All right, we'll get back to doing the drawers. I'm going to pull a few of these things out so you can see when I get to that. All right, so I've got those two, that, that. I think I'm done with the pocket hole jig. I hope. <laughs> All right, we'll move that out of the way over here. How are we going for time? I need a quick drink. Not a problem, Dylan. All right. Halfway through, I'm going to have a quick break. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my attempt to stimulate the economy again. And you'll know that last week we had a thing where we had Super Chat and people did like Matt has done today. He's already thrown in 10 bucks. Thank you very much for that, Matt. The thing is, I'm trying to stimulate the economy by going out, taking Vicky out to dinner once a week. Last week, we went up to the um, local Chinese restaurant and let me see, I'm going to show you a video. I panned the camera around the room where we were. So this will show you how desperate these businesses are. This is the local Chinese restaurant. And you can see how there is hardly anyone here, except for my beautiful girl over there. And this is all part of our local economy business stimulus. So there was one person there, apart from us. And this is a company, a business that's been with us for 20, 25 years in the local Chinese restaurant. And, you know, we said that we would also put up someone's name if they had reached, you know, it's, we, it was basically an auction. Whoever put up the biggest amount in uh, Super Chat, we would put their name uh, on the table with us. And there we are having dinner and Matt was our guest. He was basically our sponsor for the night. And what we're going to do this week is we're going to go up to the Carrington Hotel and we'll have dinner up there. And we'll do the same kind of thing. I'll do a pan around the room and then uh, whoever's name comes up. And Matthew had Matthew Leah had a, a, a suggestion last week. Why don't you put everyone's name in there who had put in some towards Super Chat? Well, I'll do that. What I'm going to do this week is if you throw some dollars in there with Super Chat to sponsor Vicky and me to go out to so help stimulate the economy locally, we'll throw your name on a card as well. So that's, that's the end of that part. No blue. <laughs> that's exactly right. I was going out for dinner with my wife. I'm not, I'm not going to wear this shirt out. Um, where are we? All right. So the next thing I'm going to do now is... What have we done? We got all this together here um, I've edge taped that I will need to edge tape again soon so I'm going to just shift a few things out of the way I'm going to take the uh, take the Stanton bench off my assembly table because it is just so easy to do that put that down there without knocking anything over with the sound um, these guys there we go Let's just stand up in the corner for the moment. 
I love it. I love it. All right, so we've got the assembly table here. Thank you, Paul. Okay, and it's, it's going to a good cause. This and also the local economy. That's what it's for. Oh, question last week. How do I clean the bottom of the iron? This guy here, you can use acetone. Uh, if you don't want to damage the Teflon at all, this one's gone a little bit beyond that. So I use 1000 grit wet and dry. A little bit of water on it, wet and dry over the top, and it cleans it up well. Now also the other week I was using uh, the edge tape, the iron on edge tape from Bunnings. I threw it in the bin. I realized I was, as I was going along, I was, it was melting onto the iron. So you know what I did? When I went down to Trademaster during the week, I bought their tape and I had a look at that and see if it was any good. And this is 0.4 of a millimeter and it worked brilliantly. Absolutely fantastic. So no melting and it tore off nicely. It cuts well. You'll see when I use it later on during the, this show how good it works. All right. Now, I'm going to tip that camera down just a little bit. So sorry, Zoe. To about there. Oh, up a little bit and cut my head off. About there. That'll, that'll just have to do. All right. So this is going down like so. I have it written on here. The width, uh, this is the base, I'll take that one off because it's, this is pertaining to if I'd actually cut the front and the back out of the one piece. And as I said, to speed things up, I cut the, and edge taped and everything. Um, okay, so this is 517 by 510 wide. So the width is the front and the back. And I put them to the outside, like so and like so. See from inside you see nothing. Oh thanks Mike. See everyone's community spirit. It's very, it's so important at the moment that we try to get these businesses kicking on again. All right. Lovely. Now I'm going to get the it's just ever so slightly long. That's okay. That's okay. I'm going to get the parallel clamps and put them across and just nip it up a little. This is like I did the other day on, on the video. Move the iron out of the way. It's one of the problems with doing this stuff is because I try and set it up so that it moves along smoothly, I have some things get in the way. All right. Now I'm not doing it up too tight. What I need to do now is to rotate it. I'll send photos of current project. You'll understand the guidance you've provided me. Oh, thanks, Paul. Now, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's going to flip over nicely. Like so. All right. Now, I have all of these lined up. Now, I've got to get these ones and pull it up this way. As I said in the video, this is how to do it. Nice. And I'm going to move that one down that way just a little bit. Um, block of wood. That's looking pretty good. Good. Another clamp. And that'll be my fourth. Over 
this way. I'm gonna, it has dropped just a touch. So I'm gonna bring it back, use a block of wood underneath and tap it. So the top is perfectly in line there. That one's perfectly there. Beautiful. Push it back. A little bit of fine adjust didn't hurt anyway. Now I can tighten it up. And this stops everything slipping. Beautiful. Good. Okay, a thumbs down, eh? Okay, hey Zoran, how are you? Now, I'm using one inch screws. Also, I've had people say they don't think that the screws are going to hold any good. One of the things about this is because the screws are going in at an angle and they're going at an angle all the way around, it's like stitching. It's not just a straight point in, it's, it's going at an angle. So it really is strong. Let's take this one out of there. And you remember what I did to this standard Robertson drive? Yes, but melamine glue also will make it slippery. So you have to, combination plane of thickness, Dave, what would you suggest? Wow, that's a question while I'm doing a project. Um, I don't know. Let me get these in. No slip, no slip. Now, one of the important things as well is the surface that you put this thing together on is dead flat underneath and doesn't have any old glue or anything like that on top. It's, it just makes it work because we want all the tops of the drawer, which is the part you see, all nice and in line, not, you know, not a mess. Uh, using pan head, I'm using washer head. Pan head are basically the micro screws. See that? Pan head. Forgotten where I'm at. <laughs> so I get each corner done. Rotate it around. So it's back to me here. And that's all looking pretty good. That's fine. It's down a touch, you know, not even half a millimeter, so I'm not going to worry about it. Yes, like the old school nailing. This is so easy. And it's kind of foolproof as well, so. Now these are getting good penetration. These screws are going in around 14 millimeters, which is fantastic. Okay, so I've got, I've got all of those in. Now I'm gonna relax this clamp here and move it along to the center. Now because it's a parallel clamp, it's pulling equally here and equally here. So I should not get any slip down. Yeah, I, so many people just don't believe how good this can be. One, two. As I say, I'm going to go over time today, probably by half an hour. So if you need to send out for sandwiches or anything, <laughs> or get someone to make a coffee for you, it's going to be longer than that. Done. Now I can undo that. They're totally done. Then I go across. This way, undo this one. Put this one here. There's a bit of a drop there. Which again, I expected that. So I'm going to spin this around. Like so. And hang it out over the edge. Block and the mallet.
Beautiful. Tighten it up. And then two more screws here. Now everything today, I have not used a table saw. I haven't needed to have a very large area. This has all been within six feet by four feet. I haven't used anything more than that. I'm trying to do a project where if you've got a tiny workshop, you can do this really easily. There's two. Spin her around again. I'll loosen that off again and then give this a tap. Give it a little bit of a touch because as you're tapping it up, it's going to, if it's a little bit tight, it'll hold the position. That's good. Give it the rest of it. Okay, so these are the last of locking the base on. Now, the reason I like these bases as well is I've, if I've got something heavy in there, it's not deflecting the base. You're not going to bend this. This is, you know, five-eighths of an inch thick. And even though it's particle board, I use HMR, high moisture resistance particle board. Okay, so that is that. I'll undo this. The next thing I've got to do is the screws on the side. So I'll spin this around, undo that, turn it that way. And making sure that the bar of the clamp is over the center of the, the, uh, the front or the rear, whichever, I think this is the front. I'm gonna do the same on this one. Making sure it's at the front, because if you don't put it over the middle, it's going to start pushing it out one way and it's going to be a mess. All right. Now, turn it around this way so you can see what's happening. I will use the mallet just to bring it up into line. That's good. That one as well. That's all lovely. And then I'm going to give it a bit more and tighten it up. All right. Four more screws at the front and then we're ready to put it into the cabinet. So easy. Oh, come on. That dropped off the, the driver for a second. Now remember, no one is going to see these. Have a look at the unit at the back and you'll see the drawer that I haven't put the front on yet. You can see the pocket holes and the screws and the one below it that's already got the front on, you see nothing. All right, I'll do this one from around here because I couldn't be bothered turning it around. <laughs> That'll do me there. Father's Day, hey? So are you aware that in Australia, we have Father's Day in September? So it's Australia, New Guinea, Fiji, and New Zealand. Uh, if you get, yeah, oh, right, pipe clamps. You could use pipe clamps instead of these if you want to do, it's not a problem. Just as long as you get a good grip so it can't slide. Um, the other thing is, uh, in a, so, Father's Day today, or sorry, for today for um, overseas, I think it's the USA, Canada, UK, there's a hundred, nearly a hundred or more than a hundred countries have Father's Day uh, on the third Sunday of June. So some people said to me, Dave, it's not Father's Day. Well, they're fellow Australians and I understand where they're coming from. <laughs> but we're not really, we're not really, we're, well, we're so international now. The, the internet is a perfect example of that. We can't be living in our own little cocoons in Australia. We've got to tolerate the rest of the world, you know. I know it's hard for some. I, I enjoy it. 
I've learned so much. I really do learn so much from people all around the world. Um, let's just put these on the floor for the moment. One of the great things about having a rubber mat floor. All right, so now we flip her over and that's my drawer from the inside. What do you think? Beautiful, all flush at the top. Magic. This is the front and it's going to go in here. Like so. Magic. So let's get this part done. I think I might just leave that camera running for the moment. Now what that noise was is my packers. So what are we going to do next? Um, with the draw slides, you don't really have to be too particular about where they go. Just as long as the draw above the draw below, when you open it, doesn't hit, doesn't hit the draw front of the one below it. Because you don't want to draw out, pull out a couple of drawers in one go. Now I have a couple of packers down there, so I'm going to shut that. Soft close, isn't that beautiful? Um, look, I might, I might bring this camera over here and swing it around a bit. I had kind of set it up. It's going to focus in and out a little bit, but that's just the way it goes. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so is everyone enjoying it? The pocket holes are great for this type of construction. We should have full of that type of drawer. Excellent. The whole Father's Day thing is on different dates is weird. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to tip that camera up a little. So we get Zoe's sign again. There we go. And switch the cameras over to camera three. Cool. All right, so this side here, I have already drilled these holes out to five millim or five and a half millimeters because I like using Euro screws. I don't like using the little screws and this one I haven't. So I'm going to pull this out and you'll probably be able to see this easy. Just here is this little lever. We push that down and that releases this. I can push this back. It's only going to go to there because this is integral to the mechanism that does the soft close. That's as far as it's going to go at the moment. Now I need to drill these holes out to um, a little bit more than what was there. So I'll bring that around, tip that down. You may see from here. Um, if we drill from this side, the blowout's going to be on that side and it's not going to worry. So if we drill from this side, we're going to get a little bit of blowout on that side of the hole and that's going to keep it proud of the draw. So it's always a good idea to drill from this side. That's one. And don't be tempted to drill it holding it there because you've got no leverage. So I always hold it away. So I've got all that leverage. This is my pivot point and this is my fulcrum. That worked easy. And then this one, plenty of fulcrum left. Turn her around to do the last one. Done. All right, that was an easy, easy peasy. Now I'm gonna slide that up again so you can see it. I'm looking back at what's happening in here. All right, this now I'm going to slide in and I'm not gonna go crazy with it. I'm just make sure that it's going in nicely. You watch the action, beautiful. And I'm gonna use a couple of packers. Now this is just 19 millimeter thick. So I've got two of them. I'm gonna sit them on there and on there, and I'm going to drop, see that that's all it needs, that's all that it needs. I'm going to pull it forward a little bit and pull this one out and forward a little bit because my first holes are going to go in there. I'm going to drop the drawer in there. 
Okay. In between. Don't worry about all that stuff happening there. And that one's gone and shut on me. Good. <laughs> oh, you rotten thing. I knew it was going to happen. There we go. Just in we go. And hopefully our supports are going to stay there. Lovely. There we go. Yes, everything's staying very nicely. And that's going to work well. So now I'm going to drill a small hole in there when I find my bit. And I've also had people saying, Dave, there's someone has been using your image on the internet for the Vic style uh, drills. Ah, uh, well, you do what you do. I got in touch with Facebook, made a complaint, got in touch with the people, maybe they'll stop using it. This is a centering drill. There's a little countersink there. I'm going to come around this side. There's the hole that I've got. I'm going to put this right there and go in that much. Do it on the other side. Blow all that out, get the Euro screws, and these have got a Phillips drive. Okay, what have we got here? Sorry, uh, I miss why you are drilling. Oh, thanks, Mark. Okay, I drilled the, the guides, Matteo, so that I can use these. Now, these are called Euro screws. They're designed for going into chipboard or going to these cabinets. Very shallow penetration. These things, I don't know, but they come with to, to work on very small diameter screws. So a, probably around a four or five gauge. I don't think they're strong enough. I like them to be strong. And so now the Euro screw will go into it. Gotcha. See that? I'll put one in on the other side and then we'll advance the drawer out of the cabinet by one set of screw holes. Come on. I've got the clutch set a little bit fine. That's better. So I'm going to bring it out, push that back until I get to the next hole, which is there, and on the other side as well. I'll drill this one on this side first. Now there's links in the description box down the bottom for all of these kind of things, if you're interested. Oh wow, someone else, thank you very much. We are going to look after the local economy. This is so good. You know, if I can, if you guys can help me, I can help them. All right, come out again. There's companies sell little guides that you can sit your drawer on. You know, good on them. I, um, I don't really see the need, personally, but that's just me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the drawer out. So to do that again, we push down, and on the other side you push up. And my drawer slides are in position. See that? We'll go over here to the main counter, and I'll switch the cameras. That is so generous of you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Don't you ever check for square during assembly. Um, I don't really need to. Because <laughs> everything I use is just magic. It does such a good job. All right. Where are we? Now, you might have seen that was rocking around a little bit then. It's not going to worry me. Because that's just the, where the guide is. In the, in the job. So you see that one's at a bit of an angle. It's not going to worry it. Okay, um, drill. Now that I've said that, I better not. <laughs> okay, this one. 
And this one. Gone off the side so you can't see what's going on. And the screws. You know, now that you've said that, it'll probably all go pear-shaped, but we'll see. I think it'll be fine. Good. Slide it back in. Uh, it's a five millimeter. I always do five. The industry says um, you should be doing it different but I always go five. Right. Take my packers out and slide her in. There you go. I'll switch cameras again. It works fine. Um, thanks, Peter. <laughs> All right, so there we go, pull her out, back in. Now, we're going, this is a, this is a trick, this is, this is a big trick. You might want to watch this one. I could pull it back just a little bit there. Now, draw fronts, and I've made the first draw front, and I'm going to show you fitting it, and then we're going to do another one. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, uh, Steve, I think it's Steve, yes, not Steph. <laughs> okay, the draw fronts. This one is going to be dead easy. I've drilled two holes here, and I've drilled those from the inside of the cabinet using a Brad Point drill bit. So there's very, very little mess on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that top drawer out. Again, that way and that way and take her out and I'm going to fit this. Now it's going to go on the front and hide that. Now I don't want to be touching so I just use a couple of coins. A couple of dollar coins, one there and one there like so and that's lining up nicely on the sides, that's all good and then a couple of these little light quick action clamps inside there to lock it on. Okay, now I can get my, get my coin back eventually and you'll see that works quite nicely. Now I'm going to put a couple of screws in. Actually, I'm going to put four, four of them. And I'm using the inch and a quarter coarse pocket screws because I haven't drilled into this, but I have drilled through the front of my drawer, not the drawer front. Uh, and it works well. It works well. Okay, we're 10 past. I think we're going to be okay. I don't have to take the drawer all the way out. I can just open it up and put this in. Now there's going to be a secret to the last one. Beautiful. See, it works so easy. There they are, inch and a quarters. I, one high and one low near the edge. And then 
When I put the handle in on the inside, it will grab the center. So it's plenty strong enough. Now I can take the clamps off and close the drawer. Beautiful. How easy is that? That's just so nice. Now, the last one. This is the tricky fellow. I've cut the drawer front already, but I haven't put any tape on it. So I'm going to show you the way that I do the edge tape, which is a little bit different to some people for this particular situation. Let's put the drawer back in and you can see that it's very important that we don't actually line that up so I can, well it would make a sense if I was putting it in the right way, wouldn't it? <laughs> I was wondering what's going on there, but it's all good now. And if you find it, it catches a little bit as it's going in, don't force it. Just lift the drawer up a little bit and it will sneak itself into the right position. You have to push it until it wants to go in the first time. Then when you pull it back out, everything will work. Nice. You like it? Okay. So here's my last drawer front. And I've left it down a little bit at the top. It's going to come up to about there. It doesn't matter if it I like to leave a little bit down at the top, just as long as it covers what's in there. Now I'm going to get my bench back and switch cameras. Ah, thanks. Thank you, Matt. Thanks again. That's brilliant. I'm going to throw everyone's name up on the tag. It's, you know, why not? I might have a couple of placemats there, little little name tags, and I'll get the waiter or waitress, or the, the wait person, should I say, take a little photo of Vicky and me having some dinner up at the Carrington Hotel. It's a lovely pub in Katoomba. So if you get a chance, go up there. It's very much Art Deco. Beautiful stained glass right away across the front. It's a very nice establishment. Um, okay, my bench. Now I'm doing these in... Uh, MR moisture resistant MDF and also marine ply and also Baltic birch and they work so well. Stephanie, how are you? All right, now I'm going to do some edge tape, which means I'll bring this back over here. We should finish perfectly at half past. Tip that down a little because I want, to, want you to see how I do this. That in there. Oh, We'll go have a cute picture in the meantime. Why not? Let's have a look. This is, uh, you've got the sign up here for Zoe. Zoe came around to see the puppy. And uh, I think I've got a picture of her here. There you go. So that's Baroness hanging out with Zoe. <laughs> that's your little dose of cuteness. Um, she'll be a nice dog. She'll be a nice dog. I was saying to Vicky yesterday, Dogs totally depend on the person that raises them. If you uh, give the dog respect and um, loyalty and also a feeling of um, protection, the dog will be a nice dog. Just got to give it respect and fair. You've got to be fair with the dog. All right, iron. I've got to turn the iron on. Barry was a good friend. It was a sad day, but I had a lot, a lot of enjoyment from him for all 14, nearly 15 years. And that's just how it goes. These clamps back up here. And we're going to get that running. Now I need to do the draw front. That's right. Wherever I put it. Ah, oh, there, there it is, of course, it's still up there. All right, I'm going to switch cameras to the side here again. And you'll see I've got these sit here, here, and I'll put this one up here. I'm going to do the bottom of the drawer front first. 
And again, we'll slide this in. I'm using John's dogs here from Yellow Box Shed. Lock that. And in this side, lock that. And the tape, as I said, that I got from Trademaster, which is, you know, I don't know what happens with Bunnings just grab whatever they can find at the time. But this, dot, this stuff is, uh, I think they buy from the same supplier always. I don't know. All right, I think that's warm enough. Edges, ends, and end. And block of wood. Beautiful. No marking, no burning. The bottom of the iron is perfect. Trim it. I reckon you could give me a wolf and I would uh, raise a very friendly wolf. But that's just me. Maybe I, maybe I don't know. <laughs> All right, now the trim the sides. And then that way, and that way with a little wood river plane. That's beautiful. And back the other direction. Done. Now here's where I do things a little bit different. I've got two dogs here to lock that against, so it can't, it can't start skewing on me when I, when I put some pressure on. I could bring this clamp in from the other side if I needed to. There's no real need. Um, okay, so there to there to there. I do both the sides to start. And you'll see why. Done. Block of wood. Or a cork block, whatever you've got. Nip the ends off. And do the sides. Now, this side doesn't have anything on it. This side does. So I'm going to go from this side that direction because I don't want to buckle the tape off. Very important. See that? Now, there's a little bit more to it, so keep watching, keep watching. Derek went and made a, uh, a 3D print jig for, I'm just going very slowly up to the corners, for his, uh, for his block plane to do this kind of stuff with. Now, You'll notice, you may not see it, but the end grain of the tape is now at the bottom of my drawer. So if we turn it around this way, so it's a cleaner cut. So the end grain, that, that's at the bottom. I'm going to do the same here, here. And then the last one is going to go across the top. And so looking down, I will see no end grain of the tape. It's very anal, but it works. You know, <laughs> I just treat it the same way as if I'm doing um, any other edge material like timber or what have you. We've still got more tips. There are still more tips. They're coming. The big one. And I'm going to explain why I do it one way and kitchen companies do it another way. All right, block of wood. Is it making sense what I'm saying? All right, so this one here. Remember, this is the bottom of the drawer. This is the top. Now I'm going to go this direction. I'm going away from the tape. Turn it around. I put little white marks on mine so I can remember where I'm at. Going this way, I can go fast. But going the other way, I have to go very carefully and stop just before it. Now what I'm going to do next 
is, move this back, move this back, get out a chisel, and I'm very carefully going to pair that last little bit. See that? Beautiful. Now, this way, and my last piece of tape is going over the whole lot. As I say, it's, it's over the top, I know that. I know that, but that's just me. It's just how I do things. There we go. Well, there you go, Stephanie, you're learning so much. And why not? It's good fun. And the edges. See this tape? I love it. Look at the bottom of my iron. It's beautiful. Nothing sticking to it. The other stuff, it was covered. You don't understand, I just threw it in the bin. I thought, no, I'm not even going to offer it to give it to anyone. It's just, it's going to be a problem. Now cutting it off and it's cutting it off Thanks, Mark. It's cutting it off um, in line with the outside there. And I'm going to go all the way, but I'm going to stop right near the end. About there. I'll take it out of the clamps and I'll show you why. I'm going to leave just that little bit on there. Because if I'd gone all the way, I would have been going close to tearing off the tape on the end. Bon appetit, hey? And I'm going to do that last bit with my chisel. So I swing the camera around, go to the front one. See, the last little bit with the chisel. I'll take the you know, iron out. We've got five minutes to go. We're doing well. Got it. And the back. Beautiful. And then my little little tool for doing the chamfers. You can did you see it stopped right near the end there? Because I'd already cleaned that part off with the chisel. Beautiful. Okay, here's the big one. I'm going to switch the cameras around over to this one again so you can see what happens. Tip that up so it's about there. And I'll explain as I'm going. What's with the clock watching? Um, it's half past, nearly half past 12. I'm going to uh, try and finish this before the half hour. We've been going for nearly an hour and a half. Okay, coin, coin, uh, check the, the top from the bottom, which I have just done then, goes that way up, and that's looking pretty cool. Now here's the trick, if I can find my little pieces. Where are they? Are they in there? Hello. Might be in the bottom one. There they are. Now, ordinarily, kitchen companies, and I'm going to pick the camera up so you can see it. Kitchen companies ordinarily have a narrow piece across the front and a piece at the back with a hole here. And that enables them to get down inside, um, hold the, the front against there, and put the screws in from the back. I don't like doing that because I want as much strength in this as possible. So my way of doing it is, now let me go, I've got to think about this for a second. First of all, I'm going to drill two holes, there and there, there and there, with a Brad Point drill bit. 
And I think I've got that drill kicking around here somewhere. Ah, uh, there it is, right there. So take this out. So this is a four millimeter brad point. And quite simply, I'm gonna drill a hole from the inside. I did say from the inside, without going through the pocket hole itself. One. Two. Don't worry about blowout on this side, it's all getting covered. And over on this side, And the bottom one. Come on. Beautiful. All right. Take this off. Now, ordinarily, I would have used double sided tape, but double sided tape has thickness. <laughs> All right, where are we? Here's the trick. We now need to pack this forward a little bit because that might be sitting ever so slightly back from the drawer front, from the, from the front of the cabinet, which it is. And I do that on purpose so that when the drawer closes, it pulls the drawer closed nicely, it pulls it up against the front. So I'm now going to pull this forward and take it out And you'll understand why in a second. Come on. Gotcha. And my drawer at the back there, see way down there, I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. I'm now going to put packers on that back section. And these ones, I've got their left over from something else. And I know that they're the right thickness. I could have put thicker pieces in. I'm going to put three of them on top of each other. Of course, I don't care how deep the sides of the drawers are. I need to get it above the front. The front is the all crucial part. So I've got those packers there. I'm going to slide this back. Move that back out of the way a little. Put this in. Tip all the rubbish out. Put this in the right way around. <laughs> Like so, and the other side, slide it all the way in, and you see now it's sitting proud. There's my drawer front. Now it's a simple matter. A couple of coins, and this stuff. Super glue. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? All right, making sure I've got the right way up, and everything's looking good. That's the right way up there. All right, super glue. Cool. Line her up. Drop it on, making sure we're in line with the bottom one and hold it for 30 seconds. Who would have thought? Hey, and thank you very much. That's wonderful. I'll tell you what, and a wine perhaps. Well, maybe not me, because I'll be driving. <laughs> so we're going to leave it there. Now, why am I using super glue? Because I've got to pull against the pressure of the spring, which is in the closing mechanism. I can't just do this. I'm, I should have been watching the clock. We're coming up to half past, but that's okay. That's okay. I think that might have it. Right, next thing, which is the last part. Put the lid back on the super glue, it's definitely. That's one of the things to do. Pull it back out. Pull the drawer out with me. Put the clamp on while I'm putting pressure on it. And the other side. I'm pretty sure that's right. 
so. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to leave that on there for a second. Lovely. And now I'm, I'm happy that it, all that's good. I'll take that driver out, or the drill out, put the driver back in, and use my inch and a quarter coarse screws. Come over to this side and raise this one up. Oh, lost the camera. I lost the camera. I'll go back to the other one. The cable felt pulled out of the camera. Jam Thanks, buddy. Um, you, you like that, do you, Bob? So many tips and tricks. Looks great. Um, heard about a transportation vehicle called a train. You like that, Steve? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna, I've got to finish it off. I lost this camera over here. <laughs> oh, well, life happens. <laughs> uh, all right, so now we'll put the screws in and I can take the clamps off. That's lovely. Pulled it in nice and tight. Back that one off just a touch. Beautiful. Tight on the other side. Back that off because it was on drill, not on clutch. Now next week, you really do want to come and watch the show next week. I have got something that is going to blow your mind away. It's absolutely fantastic. It's something, it's a product I found, and it is going to be a game changer for so many people. I knew it was for me in this workshop. Absolutely fantastic. I'm not gonna give you any clues as to what it is, but it is an absolute game changer. It's gonna save hundreds. And it's bugger all cost. You really wanna see that. Now, the other thing is, Oh, look, let's finish this. <laughs> Pop that up there. We'll also do the base for the cabinet. There we go. Doesn't that look magic? How cool is that? So all of my drawers have got equal gap. They're all nicely in line down the side. They all function like they should. That was the little bits of stuff falling off. The top one we just made, we made that whole draw during the show. Didn't take long. Um, next thing, next week also, I will show Peter. <laughs> cut it out. That's fant fantastic. So next week, as I say, next I'm going to show you how using a little jig to do the um, to do the handles so that they're all in line. We will put the top on. I've got the top. That was when I did all these other units. I ordered enough to do them all the same. And then down the uh, underneath, I've got some four by two or 90 by 45 in Australia. And we'll cut that and put it around the base, put the casters on, cabinet finished. So much fun. And the fact that we make it ourselves and you know, they're a handy looking unit. They're not gonna fall apart. If you're nice to them, they'll, it's the same as anything. Look after it, it'll look after you. I'm going to do a quick read down the side and make sure that I've got everything done. Um, the thanks for the dinner, Matt. Uh, let's, let's throw Matt's picture back up again. That one there. Thank you so much for, for helping us help the local community. And thank you so much to everyone who's thrown money in through Super Chat. The generosity is absolutely fantastic. Um, Matthew, you actually have to go to Super Chat if you want to donate a dollar. Uh, you can't just write it in the side. There's a function down the bottom. If you want to do it, that's how, that's how you do it. I'm, thank you very much for the thought. If, if you're not able to be able to do that, that's fine. Thank you so much for the thought. Okay, Tippo, thanks, Dave. Great show. It's always irrelevant for me about to be doing some draws slightly different, but uh, so much info to use. Darren, um, Woodworking is really good. It's fun. It's fun. I, my life as a builder, I used to, you know, because you're doing it all the time and it was hard work and you relied on that for an income, it was hard work. And, you know, you just lost interest. Now that I'm retired and I'm just playing around in the shed, 
I've fallen in love with woodworking again. And so you can do it. It's, it's so much fun. Thank you very much for the, uh, for the sponsorship, for, for going out to dinner. Thank you so much to everyone who uses my affiliation links in the description box down the bottom. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. Without you, I just couldn't do this show at all. Uh, I would go broke, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's great. So here's a thank you to all of my patrons. And what can I say? Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. I'll probably do the Wednesday show again. It's a little bit of fun during the week. Um, and I shall see you next week. Bye. Oop, better click this one. There we go. Got it right this time.